at the invitation of our excellent colleagues following the invitation of Peter Skriegers, the chair chairman of Free Trade Union of Latvia, and our and with our colleagues Jan Jabeltin, we had very good cooperation in the workers group and in our committee, as well as in all the activities and all the measures that we undertook at our plenary meeting at our committee of European Economic and Social Committee. And this week, th this first half year, you are the presiding country. And even if we have established permanent presidency that's now formed by Mr. Tusk. So the task of presidency in the European Union is a very important task. You prepare the agenda. You provide the capacity to organize a debate and try to focus all our institutions already for some time already starting with the from the beginning of the crisis we have worked in a very special situation in the EU which is quite contrary to the situation that the European citizens experienced for several decades it means that this entirety the beginning of the European Union with six countries was so attractive, and still it seems so attractive with 28 countries. It was so attractive because it looked constantly to guaranteeing peace, social justice, economic cohesion and social cohesion in all regions, and certainly freedom. We established over the recent years that this was not the case anymore, and some decision makers have forgotten what the main challenges of the Union are, and increasingly citizens turn away from the idea that we should still move towards more integration within Europe. I'll mention one example. Over the last three years, uh, during the uh, turn of office of the pre previous uh, commission, headed by Mr. Barroso, idea was spread that we should take better laws, while some decision makers and commissioners understood that uh, uh, a, better adopt, uh, a better law that's adopted is not to adopt any laws at all. It's a huge mistake because since then, when the first community was established in 1952, and since 1957, when the European Commission was established, we've always believed it to be our duty and responsibility and task to offer legislators laws and then to follow how these laws are applied. So to better des design laws doesn't mean that we should forget or we should cancel or evoke all those achievements, including the social achievements that we have fought for in the course of half, half century. If it continues along these lines, then there is a very high probability, unfortunately, that instead of continuing integration within the EU, we will perhaps go towards the dislocation of the EU. It means that the populists and other politicians who promise all the miracles of the world, if everybody uh, is enclosed in one's boundaries, it means that we will start believing and citizens will start believing that the future, future solution is to close down the borders, not to cooperate, and finally that's hatred. And it's huge risk for everybody. 
and our greatest achievement is peace of half century in Europe. And I spoke to you already, Madam Prime Minister, that you also are sort of with me in thinking that we should leave con legacy um, to our children so that they can live in peace. So that I thank, want to thank you for your attention and we will also listen to you with all your attention now I believe you can stay here to start a better dialogue with our colleagues. Good morning to everybody. I do hope that everybody will be understand translation from Latvian. Do you all have the desired translation languages? Honorable Mr. President of the Workers' Group, dear colleagues, dear friends, Mr. President already mentioned the beginnings of the European Union and the values of the European Union. And I can confirm that everyone in this hall, and definitely the Latvian government, and I believe also the European Commission, the Council, and the European Parliament, believe these values that are the basis of the European to be very essential and I fully agree that if we continue to fail to listen to each other, and we will not listen to the European citizens, but we will negligently move into the direction that we intend to go without any participation, without understanding, mutual understanding, then definitely we may expect a contrary interests of various groups in Europe. And I fully agree to Mr. President that we wish our children and grandchildren to have the European Union with these values we believe in. And I'd like to thank Mr. President for the reminder about the European values to all of us. On behalf of the Presidency, I'm glad to open the meeting with Workers' Group of the European Economic and Social Committee, and I can confirm to you that Latvia, in cooperation with our social partners, with our civil society, um, is very important for us. Here we have we have two, actually three, people. So Mr. Gomes, who represents the Memorandum Council, Vitalis Gavrilo represents the employers, and Mr. Krieger represents the employees. I must confess, it's not simple for us to work because these people are very constructive, uh, they are very strict and they have their requirements and demands, and I believe that's only right. Sometimes it's not very convenient for the government, but only by working together we will find the right solution and accept the, the uh, criticism that our social partners and the civil society expresses to us, because they do not do it in, in their own name. We do it for the common idea. I appreciate very highly the role of your committee by combining one uh, institution, so representatives of various interest groups of social partners and organized civil society in the whole of Europe. And we speak about Latvian presidency. I believe this is no secret to anyone. We have three main priorities that we had at the beginning of our presidency in January, that is competitive Europe, it's digital Europe, and the role of Europe in the world. 
and I am very sorry that upon the beginning of the presidency we had events in Paris where Latvia was forced to also identify the fourth priority, that is security in Europe. It is one of those matters which I must say is very essential, not only taking into account the impact of various external forces, but really taking into account this failure to listen to each other and failure to, to of seeking understanding among various groups of society. When we speak about the priorities, so as concerns competitive Europe, This is really on the agenda of the committee today about the development of the European Union, its economic development. I'm very glad that we managed already at the beginning of March at the ECOFIN meeting to reach an agreement among 28 countries about the European Invest Strategic Investment Fund. It was a record short time. And when I spoke to Mr. President uh, Martin Schulz, then the European Parliament will not uh, delay the adoption and the approval of, the, of this fund and the Parliament during Latin presidency. And during these discussions among ministers of for foreign lands, in various councils, there was a discussion about the economic development, about the strategic investment fund, but it's clear that it's, we will not be able to make Europe competitive only through this European Inve strategic investment fund. As concerns this fund, it is very important to have investments but to have, likewise, investments who create jobs, investments which go hand in hand with research, investments that are innovative. And here I would like to emphasize that it's essential to create jobs that are also of high quality because there is a direct link between jobs that are of low quality and insecure, so in work poverty and social exclusion. The European uh, Union uh, member states are recovering slowly, and uh, Mr. President uh, already mentioned this morning Greece. Uh, that is his land. And I do believe that it will, the new government will find a solution together with the EU institutions. The Greek society will not have to suffer from those decision, decisions that do not quite correspond to the movement of the country forward. I would like to mention a positive thing, this term that is a new thing. The European Commission pays more attention to the dialogue with civil society. Yesterday in Riga, I don't know how many of you participated there, whether it was an assembly or a conference. Well, anyway, it was a meeting, and you discussed the European semester. I am happy that you have prepared the main uh, directions how to get involved in the discussion uh, of uh, the topical uh, problems for each country. We shall discuss it in Latvia together with social partners. I can't even think how you can uh, introduce any structural reforms if the society does not support it. I, uh, I have, of course, uh, 
been speaking freely, not from the text. I would like to wish all of you a constructive discussion and new ideas. I would like to call upon you uh, to get out of the box that we are living uh, uh, in. We shall try to understand each other, to understand governments, and the governments have to understand social partners. Thank you once again for the organizing of this uh, conference. I wish you every success here at the conference. Uh, and I hope you'll have good memories uh, um, of your stay here in Riga, the capital of Latvia. I am proud that you're all here. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. I'm happy, uh, and I do hope uh, that uh, your program will allow us to in infl implement all these aims. And now we shall continue our work, and now it is our pleasure uh, to uh, see the Minister of Welfare of Latvia among you and other colleagues and friends who take part. We have representatives from the Parliament of Latvia, the famous, uh, uh, famous economist, Mr. Stephen Tobin, uh, uh, who is a specialist from the International Labour Organization, and we shall speak about the investment plan and uh, how to find the right approaches to it. Uh, you are uh, welcome. Uh, to give your opinion uh, so that the 300 billion that um, Mr. Juncker has promised should be put to good use and that be um, uh, uh, funding uh, that would be at the uh, disposal of the countries these 300 billion euros uh, uh, if they are not uh, invested or involved uh, or attached, then that means that our aims are not uh, re uh, achieved. But I hope that's not the case. I believe uh, it is really very important uh, to see that nothing interferes with the uh, uh, elaboration of the uh, regulations. We understand that these are not uh, uh, grants. These are guaranteed uh, credits for projects that will not be supported politically, but these are credits that will be supported by specialists and experts, and this matters. It is important because we need uh, to get out of the box and uh, realize that uh, uh, we can't all of, uh, uh, produce cream or um, butter. We need to produce something more uh, interesting, something that uh, is in great demand. This investment plan may bring us growth. There are also other f uh, funds, the Cohesion Fund, the Regional Fund, uh, and uh, I don't know what your reaction is going to be, but I do believe uh, uh, that it is important to consider the free trade agreements with the USA. For example, I do not see any other possibility how to make uh, our way uh, forward for the EU, because that means investments and that means in, um, uh, export. Uh, we, uh, by trying to overcome the crisis, only expert, export can help us, uh, uh, only investments can uh, 
um, revive any economy the way it was during the crisis, and that's the same thing I see in Europe now. I wish you valuable economic discussions uh, and also uh, thanks uh, to all of you that it, I had the possibility to be together with you.